Gotta get that right there. Last one. Ah, that right there is a limit, y'all. Oh gosh, that's another 26 right there. Just putting a simple loop knot for the top water just I hate tying directly to them because it restricts its motion, the movement, the action. So we'll do a loop knot with four twists, cinch that down, and we're ready to go with the top water action right there. Some water, moisten that knot, the line, so that the knot can cinch down without any stress from the heat. Leave about a eighth to a quarter of an inch of tag in in case there's any slippage, which there shouldn't be because it's fluorocarbon, but you never know. We'll give a good cast before we get to the fishing grounds just to make sure that we're, yeah, we're good to go. Look at that. Okay. Get that back in. And uh, now we just got to wait to get back towards the fishing grounds. Just put this guy away, ready to go. We've made it. Before we actually get started with that top water, I need to identify if the reds are gonna actually be out here. So what we're gonna start out with is a paddle tail. It's a great search bait, and I can clearly see that the mud is right here in front of me. Let's stand up, and all we're gonna do is just try to identify the fresh stirred up mud, and that's what I'm gonna target. using the wind to my advantage. It's at my back, so that's gonna help me with these extra long casts. Oh, the reds are here. I can clearly see them. That is a great sign. Probably my last cast with the paddle tail. And if this does not produce anything, our last resort is the popping cork. We'll throw on a, I'm seeing some blow ups back there. That's the third time that I've seen something like that. But the, uh, the fail safe plan is just a popping cork with some gulp at the bottom of it. Oh, right over here, blow ups. Yeah, they're out here. I just gotta get their attention. That's gonna do it for the first drift, y'all. We're gonna switch over now to the pop and cork. Let's put this guy away just for a quick second and see what we can do with that pop and cork. And I'm not too sure for those of y'all that do use top waters in the winter time. I've always known it to not be much of an aggressive bite, but the action, if you can get them to bite, oh, it's gonna be worth it. That's what I hear. Um, I'm not a part of that club yet and if I can just get a red to bite, then I know they're gonna be here. I'm seeing the blow ups, but what I don't know is if it's actually redfish or not. It could be horse mullet, you know, the big ones that are playing around. Let's get this on right here. Gulp is a sure thing for anything that swims in our waters. 
It's that scent that Berkeley uses that actually does all the work for you. I mean, you got to do the work in finding the fish, like get picking a spot where you know there's going to be fish. And then if they are there, then the gulp comes into play and actually gets the job done or the rest of the job done. So and there we are, just like that. Berkeley gulp, popping cork, hook in my shirt. There we go. All right, my gosh. I've got a rather short leader line as well from the popping cork because we're barely in like maybe eight inches of water. So you can't have that long leader line down here. First cast, pop and cork. There we are. Keeping the fingers crossed, y'all. Uh-oh, okay, okay, come on. Fresh mud right next to the pop and cork. Come on. If you're there, bite it, bro. Yeah, I'm spooking something. Whatever it is, I just spooked it with one of my twitches. I saw the mud boil go and then the wake take off out of there. That was a red right there. <sighs> okay, I gotta slow my roll. There we go. Don't wanna go any further. I'm spooking a lot of mullet right now. I'm just moving too fast. Didn't make it happen. The popping cork, well, we gave it a good shot. And this right here is the one sure method that I thought was actually gonna work with. High winds in the forecast, lots of water chop on the surface. So lots of disturbance. This makes its own disturbance and it'll allow them reds to come in and find you know, where it is that it's at. That didn't work. Now, we're gonna go with my surefire way. And that is the paddle tail, y'all. I've got a black one tied on because the water is murky and you want something that's gonna be able to contrast. They're gonna see this a lot better. So we're gonna start casting this fella for a good hour the way we did with the other two. And hopefully we'll be able to make it happen. No doubt in my mind that this one is gonna get the fish. Oh, I've just bumped some mullet. I'm about to set the hook in one of their sides. There we are. Oh, he just popped off, y'all. Oh my gosh, that one hurts. Let's make sure this hook point is sticky. Oh yeah, that is ultra sticky. All right, no way. There we are. This is a mid slot right here for sure. I don't think we're gonna keep something like this. It's just too big. All right, here we go. Oh, he's just drumming. Yeah, 24 inch redfish 
definitely not the size that we want to keep make sure that we're recording this the cameras have been acting up okay all right buddy we'll see you later oh, there it is y'all putting it together A little bit of movement right here under the surface. I got a couple of mud clouds. I haven't really been seeing much of them, mainly because the sun isn't doing its thing. I don't know, let's put our sunglasses on. Maybe we might be able to see something, I don't know. No, there ain't no way I'm gonna see. There's just not enough light. Let's put that back away. Being able to see that fresh mud definitely helps your cause, but you can still catch them. I mean, they're just spread throughout the entire back lake. There we are, just like that. There we are. He's going to be another big old fella. I don't know that we're going to be able to bring anything home today. They're just all too big. Yeah, you can tell this guy. I mean, he's going around the world, turning me completely around. One of the good things about these rods that I'm using from Old 18 Outfitters, dang it, dude, what are you doing? Turn. Oh, no. Bro. Holy cow, this turd. We'll get back to the rod, what I was saying in just a second, as soon as we land this idiot. <laughs> He's trying to break my rod. That was very close. Yeah, he's mid to upper slot right here. Let's just land him first. Holy cow. Oh, just missed him, just missed him. Come here, come here. Dude, okay, I'm done playing with you, bro. Get in the net. Oh my gosh, he's so darn big. Oh yeah, look at that, 20, that's a 26 incher right there. Definitely the big boy. All right, buddy, we'll see you later. Thank you so much for the fight. So what I was getting ready to say about the good thing about these rods that I'm using, I go with like a, this one's a light power and it's got a lot of flex in the tip. So I've got my drag cinched down. Now, if it is a big absolute beast, he can take that drag if he wants to, but he's gonna have to work for it. The rod also works in conjunction with that drag. So first, the, like, the first bit of give is gonna be the bend in my rod. And if it's gonna bend too, too much, then I know that I've got to back off on the drag so that they can take that before the rod actually breaks. Hopefully that makes sense. Setup that we're using is an old 18 Outfitters Ascent, light powered as I was saying, seven foot long. We've got a Luz Pro SP with 20 pound braid, 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. And that right there is a black with red flake paddle tail, chartreuse tail, one eighth ounce jig head. And it's a uh, three aught sized hook, getting it done. Well, we're almost to the end of this drift and I'm running out of real estate. I was hoping because this w bit of water that's right over here to my right hand side has not been touched and I haven't ran the kayak around there or through it. You know, maybe we might catch some reds that are still actively feeding. My son, he already tore it up back over there 
behind us. I mean, he's caught, I think, about seven fish already. So I don't even dare <laughs> want to go over there because those guys already got that lock jaw from getting punctured. Now we should be able to catch at least one more to knock out a solid limit of mid-slot redfish. That would be awesome. I mean, if I were to have kept those two, then yes, it would have been a limit. But for the purpose of catching fish that I could have kept, I would still consider them catches. And if I get one more that's a mid-slot, well then, yeah, that's a limit to me. Just gotta get that right there, last one. Let's go ahead and stake ourselves out. But there it is, definitely. I don't want to count my chickens until the eggs have hatched, right? I'm sorry, deep into thought, I don't want to lose this fella. Let's just bring him in nice and steady. Act like we've been here before. really love these rods. They got so much give at the tip of them. All right, this dude is coming in. He has not shown me anything. Oh yeah, he's a big fella. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Every time they dive under the kayak, it becomes worrisome. Yeah, he's not even ready to come in. He's a big fella. I'm gonna be pushing 25, somewhere around there. There we are. Ah, that right there is a limit, y'all. Again, if I was to be keeping them I just I prefer the smaller guys and it's not like I won't come right back out again tomorrow to try my hand at them again but look at that that is that's a gorgeous redfish dude I've had them do that to me before with the old school measure boards those oh my gosh dude all right stop playing around the uh, old school hog trough ones and they're so brittle that a redfish hopping on it oh gosh that's another 26 right there the redfish hopping on it like that just absolutely crushed that board into half and that's why i go with this one right here I'm not sponsored by these guys just letting y'all know a good product whenever you see one right there absolutely gorgeous That hook is in there. There we go. All right, buddy. I'll let you go. We'll see you later. Thank you for playing. I'll just see you later. All right. <laughs> that guy took off with the quickness between myself and my son who also has a YouTube channel so if you're interested in seeing some more content just through the different view of a younger fisherman then uh, go on over to his channel I'm gonna link him down in the description below check him out he's doing good stuff over there as well sometimes he fishes a little bit different than what I do but uh, at, in the end, it's all the same, and he absolutely just tore it up today. So, no 21-inch red or smaller. That's a bummer. I'm going to make one last cast, and that is going to do it. Yeah. I do appreciate y'all watching, and if you made it this far into the video, I sincerely appreciate you. You're definitely what I consider my core audience. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if that was a bite. Yeah, had to have been. There's a mud boil right there. Um, I consider y'all my core audience, and I could not do 
this job right here without y'all support. So sincerely appreciate you. Until next time, tight lines, y'all.